G'day, welcome to Marketing Sam After Work. Today I want to do a video, um, a little bit by request, but also just as what I thought was a good idea to do. Um, and that is a, a budget bill to all, listen, not necessarily budget, that's probably the wrong way to put it. It's more like a factory parts built custom precision rifle. So it'll make more sense as the video goes on, but what it basically is, as much as I possibly can, build a rifle out of off-the-shelf parts that are all good value for money and build something that is precision um, and both to use in BDLR or PRS or whatever is a precision rifle, something that I want to perform up there with a full level custom rifle, but using at least moderately budget level equipment. I'm starting with something that I've always, I've always found very good value is the Hauer barreled action. They do a decent job in all sorts of form, the Hauer side of things, but their core value is the barrels and the actions. I've found them always to be for very, very good money, well, or cheap, you'd almost say, but they work as well as the high level stuff, which is costs a lot more. Um, so the factory trigger, the the action the the whole lot in a in a in a factory form i've chosen you could choose anything in their range but i've chosen the six millimeter creedmoor with a 26 inch barrel i think it's a one and eight twist it's threaded standard trigger standard everything these ones come with a bolt knob i've already actually changed over the actual bolt knob i put this on a little while ago and i locked tied it off uh, so that i locked tied it on i did that as soon as i got it in before i pulled it out of the box well just as I pulled it out of the box. But that is, uh, so I've changed over to an A1. I've forgotten this is a, I'll put the link down below as to, well not the link, I'll put down all the details of the components, but I've already got a bolt knob on it. But otherwise this is straight out of the box, a barreled action. Now what it's gonna fit it in, there's all sorts of choices on the market at the moment. Um, I've used all sorts of things. One that I wanted to do because I thought it has a nice path in the way of being a little bit like the, the also Ranza, like everybody else, but it's also a very good piece of gear. And that is the KR, K, sorry, KRG Bravo um, chassis stock. Um, these have an aluminium chassis and then they have polymer bits they bolt to them. I'll go through it in more detail in a little while, but a pretty decent thing. Um, the, the KRG do a little bit of um, some different ranges. The Bravo is very well um, costed for or priced for what, it, for what you get, but this is what I'm planning to put together with some other components. But, well, let's see uh, what I can turn this into. Okay, here it is. So, given the magic, the magic of video, um, I've got it together. It's actually a week later, we've been through, we've been out and shot it, we've tested it, it's done all the bits and pieces it's supposed to do, um, and it performed above what I'd hoped to be truthful. Um, and listen, I suppose I just wanna go through and show the bits and pieces of what I've done here. Um, I think this is a great combination, but it's also of that shop bought um, parts, where it's just an assembly of parts. There is one part I made actually, pretty obvious with the shiny bit over here, but there's one part I made. Basically it's shop bought parts um, that are put together in what ends up with a custom rifle in its own way of doing things in a budget sense, very much so, but with precision to go with a custom rifle. So I'll explain what I've used, why I've used all that sort of stuff, but I'll go through and do that now. So. We have the Hauer, as, as we started with, we have the Hauer barreled action in the six millimeter Creedmoor. The KRG chassis. Now these things I think are a very good option. I really liked them. I've, I used them a couple of times in the KRG Bravo chassis. They have an aluminum chassis inside the, the, the stock or whatever you want to call it. So there's a little chassis inside here and then there's these polymer rear end and fore end that bolt onto them which make them um, quite, um, listen, what would I say? The way bolt up and the structure of things is very, very good. It, it does mean that you can't do much in the way of modding, modifying and drilling and bits and pieces to them. You've got to work with what they've got but they are set up well to do that. Um, I Bipod wise, I've used my bipod system to go with this. Now they are set up to run with any normal regular bipod, mounting on Picatinny rails, um, mounting on even an Arca rail on the bottom here, go through all the different ways you could do that, which would all be very good. 
Um, I like my bipod system having a very low center of gravity. The way they lock up, the way they, the long, long legs, all those sort of bits and pieces, I really do like the way they work. And this having a little slot, the Bravo having a little slot in the front and then being able to bolt to the aluminium chassis inside here, and I'll show you some images of that, meant that that bolts on really simply. So some mounting, uh, bolting underneath the bottom here, bolt to the chassis, then the, then the um, polymer four end clips on over the top of it, means that you still can put all the other bits and pieces on side of it, and I get the benefits of my system at the front here. Going right forward, use my 5.8x24 or the three port muzzle brake in the 5.8x24, very simple, a little bit of filing to a little bit of um, timing it is what I did is actually just I've shown a video on how to do that but filed it down to get it timed perfectly so it's on nice and tight. They do a really good job, really tames everything down but for us it's the no blast in the face and the not pushing dust off the ground is why we use it for our prone shooting. So nice and simple and I like the look of them too. So that, that's all straightforward on that side of things. I should say on the top here, I suppose this setup here is very particular to me in the way of both the rail and the um, air attack base are how I run things so I can swap things all over the place. I like it because it means my adjustable um, base, these air attacks having a zero to 70 MOA of adjustment to them means that I can plonk them on pretty much most things and then be able to adjust them to suit what rail they've got, all those sort of bits and pieces. So I could actually put this, which is the um, Cytron S3, and the, uh, I think it's six to 24 in the 50 mil um, second focal plane scope had it for a long time this scope it's always been the same it's normally the scope that sam runs with um, it's a very well priced you can still get these sort of scopes they're very good money for value um, and 100 moa so 100 minutes of internal elevation so that setup i actually have it on a um, 40 moa rail and then by popping this up to 10 which gives me a 50 moa um, rail angle or, or scope mount angle meant that I can get the full 100 minutes of elevation. So you don't need to go to something expensive like this this adjustable thing, uh, this adjustable base. You could obviously set it up with that with a, if going to a 50 mil rail or going to a 20 mil rail with a 30 mil set of like uni mount type thing. There's various ways to get your setup there, but this is what I was doing so I can actually stretch. This thing could go out over a mile in the way of its elevation because it'll have it all there with this setup with 100 minutes of elevation. Um, and basically gives you flexibility to zero at 100 yards, do all the other bits and pieces with it. So there's various ways of doing that and I have various videos on showing how to set that up to work that all out. This is the way I did it because I will simply undo those that scope and it sits back on the shelf there and can use in all sorts of different places as I have all my scopes set up like that. So that's the reason for that logic and that setup there. But basically just a scope rail um, properly uh, with Loctite bits and pieces to the um, action. So done properly and then set up in whatever form you want to do with the scope on top of things. So that's pretty straightforward on that side of things. What I would say is what's notable here as, a, as I've sort of been encouraging people and I always do is I've got good height. I've got a reasonable amount of height of getting that scope up. It looks less obvious when you've got the when you've got a front guard or you've got like my, my bipod on the front here. But if you put this all down to where it's just a clean barrel, then oh that's so high. How can you have it so high? I deliberately do that because I want my head position to be there because of this bit back here. I want this straight line of push, even though this is just a six millimeter Creedmoor. So there's not a huge amount of recoil and it's got a three port brake on it. So it's got, it's low on the recoil. Doesn't matter to me. I still want that line of push to be straight. So this, so that where the collarbone or where your pressure point is here is directly in line with where the line of force is. So that's what I want to line up. So I've raised this up to raise that up. I don't want to raise my shoulder up and bring my eye level down. I want to raise this up and bring my eye up. So it's all up in the same place and get to that point here doesn't affect, doesn't make it inaccurate, doesn't make your holdovers different, actually makes it better, but doesn't affect anything other than point blank shooting. So 
up to, you know, if you're trying to shoot a six millimeter creed more super accurately at 10 yards, okay, then you have to allow for things with a high scope. But if it's once it's out past 50 yards and certainly out past 100 yards, then a higher scope does not affect you at all. No issues whatsoever. So that's the bits and pieces. And I should say, can't side of things. Yes, there is a, a bubble level on here. Always shoot precision with a bubble level of some form. This is just a little, I've, I've forgotten where this got that bubble level's been on there for over 10 years and I can't tell you what the brand of it is, uh, but it's always got a bubble level on there. So that's the scope position, the scope height, the chassis, the bolt together, the bits and pieces there. Oh, it is just a, um, I've forgotten where this is. This is a, a just on a, um, a accurate mag magazine. Doesn't really matter. It fits most of the genuine, one, the the normal ones in there, and this all feeds really nicely with a six millimeter creed more. All that worked really well. Okay, the 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 butt stock does have this adjustable and easily removable um, cheek rest. Works nicely, positioned nicely. Very very simple. Very very clean. Um, easy to adjust. Um, and yeah, listen, works as well as what the guys at KRG made it work. Works really nicely. Back to this bit here. The standard butt pad height is straight level down here. Works okay, but it doesn't have that line of push that I want it to have. Really, in, the, in everything else counteracting or setting up for it in low recoil, it's going to cause le very little issues. But I'll always go with getting my engineering right. It is part of where my precision comes from. The engineering of it really matters in the finer details. So I would need to raise that up to where I get that line of push. To do that, fairly simple process. I've used, and really steel you could use, aluminium's easier to use. And it is the type of thing that the home handyman can pull off without any, without any concerns. Um, I simply take off the butt pad, I then trace out around the butt pad on a piece of paper, trace out where the hole points are, nice and simple, and then I work out with my butt pad how far I want to move it up. I take a measurement of how far I'm moving that up, then I do on that same drawing, I do the same thing. I move it up and trace it out again. Mark my hole points again, and then I have joined that together, I have that silhouette, I have that drawn on a piece of paper exactly what I want. I have used some 10 millimeter aluminium and you could use a fret saw, you can use, a, I used a, a, a band saw and I used a linishing belt to go through and turn that into a nice shape. Simple drill, simple tap in aluminium, nice and simple to do. Um, I've just used the, I think they're M5, but bane through, basically gone through and then set it up to where I raised it up. Simple thing to do. Um, I, maybe some stage or other, some factory will go through and produce enough of these different ones to get exactly what you want. I would go with, it's a nice bit to do yourself. It's a nice bit to simply build and go through. I could paint it, I've left it silver, but it doesn't do anything wrong like that, that sort of stuff. Um, you could go through and get it cerakoted and all the different pieces to make it disappear completely. But I've left it, I wanted to show that that is the bit on here that I had to make. It's the only bit I had to make, but that was the simple process of doing it. Now the other things I've made before, but now I have a product to do it, was I wanted to get the this angle here to be straight and parallel with the barrel. I wanted to put a bag rider on it, although they're not a terrible shape, the bottom of these stocks, they still have a bit of an angle, um, and I wanted to straighten that out. I was gonna go for full precision as far as I can go and give myself a little bit more depth. That means that it sits up in a bag rider a little nice in the, and sorry, in a, in, I'm using the bag base, but if you're just using on a bag, then sit up a little more height really helps in the way of making the precision thing work. Getting my chest off the ground, all the bits and pieces that I want to make sure I want to make it short, shoot properly. Um, so my angled buttstock bag rider is very simple. That then mounts on just like anything would do to the two little points where you can mount it to. So just um, bolt it to the up through the bottom here, and then this goes on. If for people that don't my, my don't know, my angled buttstock bag rider then can be corrected by moving this back to or forward to where you get that angle to the right place. Is what I've done. So you end up with it's nice and straight. Got a little V on the bottom that sits in the bag really nicely. And that's it. And as you can see, um, this thing started to shoot really well. We'll take it back out again and do some more precision work with it. But it started to shoot really, really, really nicely. Now, 
I would stress that if they still are a decent thing, even without all this stuff on a Bravo stock on, and the Harrow barreled action shoots really nicely, the Bravo stock shoots really nicely as well. But these are the bits and pieces that I did to end up with something that, well, in my opinion, looks pretty good, but I suppose it's a bit of my stuff, um, but it feels nice to shoot really nice and controllable nice straight action in the way of the the recoil action side of things was really good and it's grouping really nicely and of course the six millimeter creedmoor is not a bad round a lot of speed out of the thing so it's i was using the 109 grain burger round and we're running at the 31 30 roughly so really good speed out of it which means that we're cutting through the wind properly and nicely and lots of the stuff so at 11 55 yards this thing was performing well enough to take down that's an eight inch by eight inch square plate that it was took down with I think it was 10 shots we went through to take that which should have been seven shots old seven hits so that's still performing really well so the listen performing really nicely we'll go out and do some more testing with this one here but ultimately apart from one little piece that I made this is just a bunch of parts um, and there's various ways to, to, to skin this cat, do this in a different fashion, but this is still just a parts built custom rifle that um, really turns it into something that performed nicely and very good money for value. Anyway guys, I hope you liked the video. Thank you very much for checking in and we'll catch you next time.